Today, our speaker is Robbie Messer. He was born August 17, 1999. Robbie was diagnosed with autism at the age of three, and that was when he began his autism quest. Early intervention, a supportive family, and a lot of hard work helped shape Robbie into someone who became successful, not only academically, but also socially. His sophomore year, he coordinated an autism day at his high school and created a video to help others understand it better. This is when he felt that he had found his calling. It was so successful throughout the entire school district that he did it again his senior and junior years. In 2018, once he graduated, he knew he wanted to continue being an autism advocate and share his experience. This is how AutismQuest.org was born. To not just answer someone's question, but how to engage in conversation. And I had to make a conscious effort to look someone in the eye. I wasn't aware of things happening around me, just things that affected me. It wasn't until I was about eight years old when I asked my mom what was wrong with me. While other kids got to go play after school, I went home to continue working with the behavioral specialist. What my mom told me was this. She said that there wasn't anything wrong with me, but that everybody has their own struggles and things they have to deal with. Like some people have to wear glasses to see better or others need inhaler to breathe better. She said with me, my brain works a little differently than other people. And that was me. I just have to work extra hard to understand things. She said it was called autism, but that wasn't anything to be ashamed or embarrassed of. And she thought I was amazing. Mm -hmm. So as I got older and wasn't receiving early intervention anymore, my family was there to help me continue on with understanding myself better and really tuning into the things I struggle with and how to overcome those struggles. Something you might find shocking is that video games actually helped me socially. I would be at home with my headset and my friends would be at home with theirs. We'd be playing games together and talking and laughing. It was such an awesome thing to have in my life. It was a connection with peers and interaction with that. At one point, my mom didn't think it was possible. It was time to leave the comfort of elementary school and move on to where there were going to be a lot of changes. And my mom was concerned. At the lower grade levels, if I wasn't clear on assignment or misunderstood what to do, we could very easily call up one of my friends and figure out what needed to be done. She actually started to second guess her decision of putting me in such a small school and thought about homeschooling me instead. She was worried because the consistency I had for the last six years was going to be gone. And I was about to be thrown into the brutal world of middle school with multiple teachers and kids I didn't even know. But I told her I wanted to move on to middle school with my friends, so she agreed. But she also had a plan. She went and talked to the administrators, and they agreed to place my best friend in every class with me. So basically, what each teacher did was put him next to me and then gradually moved him further away so that I wasn't so dependent on him. This gave me someone familiar in my class who they knew I would talk to if I was having a problem. Why this was helpful is because change is incredibly hard for a lot of people. But when you have autism, change can be devastating. Even the smallest thing can cause almost a panic. 
The best way I can describe it to you is this. Imagine a situation where you're nervous or unsure of what to do. You feel shaky, your heart is pounding, and your stomach is tied in knots. That is what it can feel like for me. When you do something as simple as making a small change in routine or when something unexpected happens, that is why it was always important for me to be told of a change before it happened so that I could mentally prepare myself. But you know, life happens. And we can't be prepared for everything that's thrown at us. That is probably one of the hardest things for me. That if something unexpected happens and I haven't been told what to do in a certain scenario, I have a hard time problem solving. For example, eighth grade field trip was to discover a kingdom. My mom was a chaperone, but all the kids go off on their own and I was with a group of my friends. At some point, I got separated from my friends. Another group I knew was nearby and I stayed with them, but they weren't my normal group of friends. So time goes on and I see my mom and she could tell something was wrong. She figured out that I was upset because I got separated and my day isn't going as planned. That's what she said to me. But Robbie, you had your cell phone with your friend's number and my number. Why didn't you call one of us? And then she asked me, what would you have done if you hadn't had these other kids to walk around with? And then I said to her, I would have gone to the front of the park and sat by the fountain where we were told to go to at the end of the day. So on my own, I was not able to figure out a solution as simple as pushing a button on my phone. Let me tell you, ever since that day, if I go anywhere with my mom, she always says, don't forget, if we get separated, you have your phone. Did she really sound like that? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> it just came out accidentally. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> so, I survived middle school, and now I'm off to high school, right? And my mom was fully aware that I wasn't very street smart at all. She was worried I'd be hearing things, mostly inappropriate things, and I would have no idea what any of it meant or even know how to respond. So she did something I'm pretty sure no other mom in this entire world has ever done. She sat and told me every bad word. And phrase and what each one meant. Oh, Let me tell you, that was one of the most horrifying experiences of my life. <laughs> you okay? okay. <laughs> High school was a great experience. I had my same corporate for friends, and I was getting better at handling things. Working in groups was always a struggle because everyone seems to talk at once and get off topic. I did have a few times I had to remove myself from the situation and pull it together. I did have a few challenges. Going to rallies could be hard for me because they were always very loud and chaotic. PE could be difficult because a lot of the activities involve quick changes where you don't much have time to process what you need to do. And they were just too overwhelming to keep track of all the rules at such a fast pace. And watching videos in class was always difficult. When I was younger, I would watch TV with the volume all the way down because I couldn't follow the dialogue. Now I watch with closed captions, which helps me better understand what's going on. I did making attempts to get involved with extracurricular activities. I was class VP in eighth grade. I tried getting involved with props and sets for the drama club. I was secretary at the gaming club and I was winter homecoming lord my freshman year. Oh, wow. <laughs> but 
nothing seemed to be a good fit for me. Then during my freshman year, I saw on the internet about April 2nd being World Autism Awareness Day and wondered why nobody was doing at school. So sophomore year, I had an idea put, to put on an autism day. I told the student council my story and asked if we could do it. They agreed and I made a video that was shown not only there, but at all the schools in the district. The student council bought autism merchandise. My mom made the shirts and everyone wore blue. It was such a success that I did it again my junior year, my senior year, and have been asked to come back and do it again every year since I graduated. Putting on these autism dates and making these videos really put me on this path of spreading autism awareness. And now here I am, and I really feel like I have found my calling with spreading autism awareness. And this is what I truly want to do with my life. About a month after graduating, we formed Autism Quest, where our mission is to increase autism awareness and understanding and acceptance. I gave my first presentation about three months after, and since then, I have given dozens more to educators, parents, church groups, and now all of you. <laughs> we have a website, Autism Quest, Dot org, where we have all of our videos along with important facts and information. And we just recently became a nonprofit 501c3 organization. You. you know, even with all this that I'm doing, I still have my challenges that I have to live with. My poor auditory processing is something that's a daily struggle. What helps me deal with this is that I'm a visual thinker. So for me to accomplish a task, I had to visualize each and every step to be successful. Also, a lot of chaos and loud noises can really cause me to shut down. So I use high fidelity earplugs when I need them. And what's so great about these earplugs is that they don't muffle the sound and instead, they just lower the volume. I've even used them at a concert of all things and made it so I was able to enjoy it without any issues. Another thing I have a hard time doing is multitasking. And that is one reason why I still haven't gotten my driver's license. I don't know if you know who Temple Grandin is, but she is an author and professor of animal science who happens to be autistic. In 2019, I had the opportunity to meet her and see her speak. And she had some very interesting things to say about autism and driving. <clears throat> she said that since people with autism have a hard time multitasking, she said the key to driving is to practice in areas with no other cars around so that the different aspects of driving are saved to your muscle memory. That way, when you start driving in traffic, you can fully focus on what is happening around you. So our new plan is for me to get my permit and just keep renewing it, no matter how long it takes, until I am 100% comfortable with driving. A few years ago, we came up with an acronym for autism. Even though it spells out the word autism, I feel like it can apply to everyone, no matter the situation. A, accept. Accept the situation and the things you can't control. You, understand. Understand that any change that can happen comes with consistency and hard work. T, teach. Teach yourself and others the best way to handle things. I, inspire. Inspire yourself to be the best version of you, and others will also be inspired. S, support. Support happens when we surround ourselves with people who lift us up. And M, motivate. Motivate yourself and others to achieve 
goals. We all have something, something that we have to deal with in life. And my something just happens to be autism. I think that if every single one of us can do these things, not just for ourselves, but for anyone who is struggling, the world would be a better place. I just want to thank you all so much for having me here and listening to my story. I would be glad to answer any questions, if you have any. If I understand your question or don't answer it the right way, please let me know, and I'll try my best to get it right, although I don't promise anything. <laughs> thank you again for having me here and also for now being a part of my village. Thank you. I'm still not sure about my driving, so you'll never get there. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, if you ran into my car in yeah. the parking lot. <laughs> Robbie, that was a great presentation. Yes. Thank you. And I know you had your notes and you barely looked at them, which I would never be able to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank Same thing to you. So, can you tell me the difference between your group, Autism Quest, and Autism Speaks? So, Autism Quest is mainly about me going around speaking about my personal experiences mm -hmm. to increase autism awareness and understanding mm -hmm. acceptance. Mm -hmm. So it's more about that. Okay. And Autism Speaks is, it's kind of, it's come a lot bigger. Right. To have like different like factions, I guess, mm -hmm. about it. it. It's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. That's basically what I get from it. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, are you like speaking to um, high schools throughout the whole, kind of area like do you do, do the bay area so, i mean i mean you came here because you have a day off but have you done the bay the bay area as much? uh i don't think we have to done the bay area no he doesn't he doesn't speak to kids oh okay he so it's just to groups. Teachers. He, he does like um staff development days and stuff like that oh. for schools oh. and, he's, he's, and then you show videos of the uh, so for the high school, he did videos. He had just okay. little five-minute videos that he did, and he would show in every class, like that is what he was doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In a lot of schools, they tend to want to put the kids in the special ed classes, opposed to what your parents did, which was mainstream. Uh, how important do you feel that that is? I really only know like what I dealt with, but I during middle school I was in like in a resource class, so I did have a kind of special day class, but I also had the mainstream. So I, that resource class or that class in middle school I, did really help me a lot socially. So along with that, I was doing the mainstream stuff. Did I? Yeah. Answer? Absolutely. I'm so, yeah. So, is you're the mother? I am the mother. Okay. <laughs> yeah, mama. Yep. <laughs> she sounds nothing like that. <laughs> it was an accident. Yeah. I would say your parents are amazing in terms of uh, advocate and dedication and everything to the program. Um, I have a sister with special needs, and you were my, that's like my mom. You're, you did a great job as a speaker. I just want to tell you that. Thank you. Uh, very, very good job with the message and, and nice. So the question I have is, Newman's pretty rural. So what were the resources, and then how did you how did you work within that? And how did... uh, we are about 40 minutes from Modesto, okay. which is big. And yeah. so we're about to start diagnosed with Modesto. And so they're the ones with um, Valley Mountain Regional Center. They had um, the... They call them tutors, the behavioral specialists come to our house. So they have okay. Newman. And at that time, they weren't actually coming to Newman, but they made an exception for him. They saw something in him, I guess, and made an exception. And so they did. And then when he started school, they would go to school with him, and then they would come home and finish it out at the house. Yeah, that's remarkable that so, they would do that. Yeah. yeah, and so I guess a lot of people at, at the time were moving to Stanislaus County so that they could get kind of that resource from mm -hmm. uh, 
And then one last thing, sorry, Frank, is what, so how is this, I mean, clearly you had a lot of support from the school district and from like the regional center or the county, mm -hmm. how is that, um, how has that helped other, other children that, that students that you now see that are in the program that, that are assumedly yeah, yeah. getting like tons of support that they never would even know they would yeah, and I don't know how much they're doing that now. There's a lot of programs where there's just lots of schools. And yeah. so um, the, the company or ABC is applied behavioral consultants that work with him. He went and gave a speech to their staff in Stockton uh, a couple years ago. And um, they said they are not even really going into houses like they were. Kids come to them. So mm -hmm. they had special rooms and, yeah, and everything. So we kind of got lucky that they came to us and... <laughs> It was kind of kill and drill, like with everything, you know, with him. And mm -hmm. I mean, he worked hard. That's why he had such a great work ethic. Mm -hmm. like, they worked him hard, yeah. 40 hours a week. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what's the future? Are you? Do you see yourself just moving out, or how, eventually, or how does that all work? What does that look I mean, like? You know, we're lucky because he he's very capable. Yeah. Um, but he does still have his struggles. But I mean, for now, he's living at home. Um. Mm -hmm. He wants to start a little uh, business with uh, tech support and stuff like that. Oh, cool. For around town, he subs at um, our high school because he was a student worker in the cafeteria. So now he subs in the cafeteria when the ladies need a day off or whatever. And, and, and then I take days off and drive them around yeah. to do this. Wow. That's so great. this is kind of what he wants to do. He wants yeah. to get it to the point that this, like, this is what he does. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, are you are two questions and fantastic presentation. Um, are you still pursuing your education? Are you? I noticed you said you, you obtained your your your, uh, your your AA degree, and then are you going, are you looking to transfer to the CSU or UC or private? Um, I don't have plans for that at the moment, but what I am planning to do. San Jose State. <laughs> <laughs> but what I am planning to do is study for a professional certifications um, like for IT and stuff to gain my knowledge and just go give you Cisco certs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go, yeah. Help you with Cisco cert. Hello. And then the uh, the other uh, question was uh, doing these presentations. How can we help, or how can others help? With the, what would you say is the the, the roundup message that we can carry that forward? Whoops. What do you mean by that? Can you, sorry about that. Um, how can we be of help to to the cause of what you're trying to do. You're telling your as a Rotary story. Club, how can we help you? <clears throat> yeah, just spreading the word about this, okay. just telling other Rotary Clubs about it. Okay, I can do that's that. how we were able and to other reach organizations here. Organizations and you know, I'll take them almost anywhere. You know, okay. yeah. and um, and if anyone ever wanted to donate, they can donate through the website and and uh, so we kind of keep this going. Mm -hmm. and, and that's pretty much, oh, thank you so much. But, so word of mouth is kind of what we're going by right now. Mm -hmm. Just trying to you know, Oh, you said yeah, I had a quick question for you, both of you guys. Great, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very thank you. Um, my wife works at a pretty much a special needs hub for a school district. She's a principal there. And what she tells me every day when she comes home is the hardest part for parents is navigating the system. They don't know what resources are available. Do you guys do any sort of parent advocacy or parent education so they combine no, I, I would like to do that. You know, yeah. I, I work, um, I'm an aide in special ed mm -hmm. at, in Newman. And so it, how much I can say without getting in trouble at this point, yeah. I, I had told a, um, some friends of mine, I said, the day I retire, I'm going to let everybody know exactly how you're supposed to do this, yeah. you know. Why don't you do it now? Because well, working for the school district, there's only if, if I say too much, like you should no be doing attack, this. No, 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 I mean, why don't we own consultant now and get paid that way? Because obviously, there's a big need, it is, and it's, and it's hard, yeah. it's a hard thing to navigate. There's a lot of resources out there, parents and parents there are. just don't so know. So, don't offer them, right? You have yeah. to go to ask them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I was in a situation with a child that needed some special attention, and we took that child to a special counselor who found a special school, mm -hmm. and she made a good living out of it. Yeah. 
Can I have one last personal question? Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Graduating high school uh, before you turned 18 or after? I think I was still, I was 18. When you graduated? Yeah. He was, he was 18 his entire senior year. Okay. Because that's something that my parents worked on. With the, the, normally, what they would do is once you turn 18, they kick you out regardless of where you are in the school. If you're month oh. one or you're a week before graduation, they'd say, sorry, you're out. Oh, really? Yeah. That was something that my parents really worked on. Is if you start your senior year under the age of 18, you're graduating. Wow. You're following through with your friends and you're going to go graduate. Yeah, that, that's not a thing when yeah. you are old. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, they got it, my parents got it passed at the state level. Oh, they, did they? Yeah, they the ones that, oh, yeah okay. that's what they did. Yeah, that was a good. Yeah. So I was going to ask and see how it was. Yeah, I think you turned 18 like the day school started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 18, yeah. 18 yeah. So the old way, they would have said thanks, but. Oh. Yeah, oh. no, it's sad. Wow. It's sad. Especially when you went to school with all these people forever, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. All right, but it's changed. Okay, thank you very much. Let's thank give another round of hands. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, forget, don't forget, Saturday. Saturday, everybody. What's happening Saturday? I'm sorry. Ken? Uh, oh, you're calling me. Uh, uh, you're playing tennis. It's all your best We're playing tennis. Bring your racket up. See you there. Uh, Chris Chavez. We'll see you there. Be there. Be square. I'm <laughs> <laughs>